question is a, a beam, which we've looked at before. Um, let me get a pen. And a... So here's our beam. There, look. Um, and it's supported here. So this is reaction A here. And that's reaction B, which we've seen before. With this one, it's not um, just supported at the ends. Look, it's got a bit of an overhang. So here is an overhang, which won't cause any problems because we just do the same method. You don't get scared of the overhang because people do for some reason. It's got a point load here, three kilonewtons. There's my point load coming straight down. It's got a five kilonewton there coming straight down. So five kilonewton, three kilonewton, and it's got a UDL, which can be the weight of the beam or you know the weight and uh, a distributed load on the beam so udl uniform distributed load of 0.2 kilonewtons per meter so every meter there's 0.2 kilonewtons so we've got to work out the reactions um, here a and reactions b um, th these are the distances so the overhang is three meters um, between here, so the five kilonewtons is seven meters from this point, and the five kilonewtons is five meters to the end of the beam. So this bit here, um, I put that in just to point it out later on. This is where the UDL will act. Don't forget the UDL. We don't like the UDL like that. We need to convert it into a point load. So that's where it's going to act when I convert this UDL into a point load. It's halfway along where this UDL acts. So this beam is 7, 8, 9. It's 15 meters long. Which means the UDL is going to act halfway along, which is going to be 7.5 from either end. Um, so first of all, let's calculate RA and RB. Let's put our assumptions in, which you should all put your assumptions in. Some of the forces equal zero. Some of the moments equal zero. Clockwise moments is positive. I'll call them positive. Anticlockwise negative. You can call them. You, you can call anticlockwise positive if you want to. Some people do. As long as you keep to the same notation, you'll be all right. So all the forces up and down have got to add up to zero. All the moments going clockwise and anticlockwise have got to be zero. Moment is force times distance. We should know that. And the beam is in equilibrium or it's in balance. So it's not twisting or turning or falling through the floor. So we need to work that out. Um, first of all, we need to convert this UDL here. So this UDL which we don't like, we can convert that into a point load. And that point load will act here. So, um, convert the UDL into a point load first. So, it's 0.2 kilonewtons per meter. So every meter is 0.2 kilonewtons, and we've got 15 meters of it. So to convert it into a point load, we just multiply the UDL, which is that. Don't forget, this is the killer bit. So it's 0.2 killer, which is a thousand really, times by the length of the beam, which is 15. So we'll do 0.2 times 10 to the 3, times by 3,000, sorry, not 3, that's the answer mark, times by 15 gives you 3,000. So 3,000 newtons or 3,000 kilonewtons, look, 3 times 10 to the 3, 3,000 kilonewtons. And it acts halfway along the beam, or where the UDL acts, because the UDL acts across the entire length of the beam, which is 15 meters, which means the point load due to the UDL will act halfway along this UDL which is going to be seven and a half. So 
it's seven and a, it's halfway along the beam basically so it's seven point five seven and a half meters because seven and a half is half of fifteen so and it's three so it's going to be three killer newtons which means now we've got a beam we've got rid of the udl so now we've got a beam with an overhang with three forces so we've got three kilonewtons coming down we've got three another three kilonewtons coming there and another five kilonewtons coming there because we've got rid of the udl we've converted it into a point load nice and easy so now we need to convert reaction b which is this reaction here and we're going to take moments about point A. Here's my point A here. So I'm going to be taking a moment, which is force times distance. So let's get rid of all of this. So now we're going to be doing force times distance and working out is it going to be clockwise or anti-clockwise moments. So don't forget now we have got a force here now. We have got a force there now of three kilonewtons here so we're taking moments about this point we're calling clockwise positive anti-clockwise negative more force times distance so and we're going from point a so that's my pivot point right there so all distances come to that point the first one i've done three thousand times by three this three thousand here it's kilonewtons, right? So three kilonewtons, which is three thousand. That's my force. How far away is it from this point here? It's three meters, and it's trying to move this beam anti-clockwise, which we call negative. So there's my three thousand times by three. It's going anti-clockwise. That's why I've got a minus number there. So it's this minus 3,000 times by 3. Because it's 3 metres from this point to this point. And it's going anti-clockwise. That's why I put a negative number there. Some of the moments got equal naught, so we'll do plus. So plus, I've got 5,000 here, look. That's my 5,000. So this 5,000... 5,000 newtons, how far away is it from this point? Well, we know it's from there to there is 7. So it's going to be 5, that's the force, 5,000 newtons times by 7. Oh, it's a good circle, look like at that. So because from this point to this force is 7 meters. So it's going to be 5,000 times by 7. 5,000, that's the newtons. And there's my meters. 5,000. 5,000. And how far is the 5,000 away from this point? Let's get a bigger pen. It's 7 meters to there. Look. So it's 5,000 times by 7. It's going clockwise because this thing would push this beam that way going clockwise that's why I got a plus so 5,000 times by 7 so that's one force done the other force done now we've got this UDL don't forget that is the 3 so we'll get rid of some of these oh no let's get a rubber all right get a bit messy so now we've done the 5 um, we've done the first one so now we're doing this point here so this is a point load coming down. This is the UDL one. It's 3,000, because we worked it out here, look. That's the force. And how far away is it from here? Well, we know it's 7.5 from there to there. So from there to there, it's going to be 7.5, take away the 3. So it's there's the force and there's the distance. And we know from that force to the end of the beam is seven and a half. 
and from there to there is 3. So 7.5 take away 3. 7.5 take away 3, which is 4.5. So from here, so in there is 4.5 meters, 4.5, right with it. Then that's going to be a 5, look at it. So force times distance, 3 is the force, 3,000, the distance is 4.5. So 3,000 times by 4.5. This force is trying to push this beam clockwise because it's pivoting on this point. It's pivoting there. It's trying to force it clockwise. That's why I've got a plus there. If it was going anti-clockwise, we put a negative in front of the three. So um, we've got one force there, which we've done. We've got another force there, what we've done, and the five that we've done. So that is the moments due to the forces that we know. Um, we're trying to work out, obviously, this reaction here, which is a force. So now we need to know this force here. Well, we know it's going this way, and it's going to try and push the beam that way. So it's going to be an anti-clockwise moment. We don't know what RB is, so that's the force we put it in, because it's a force, it's a reaction. It's going anti-clockwise because there's the pivot point. So if you pushed up on here, it's going to try and turn it this way. Um, and how far is this force from this point? It's going to be 7 plus 5, which is 12 in my book. So the force is RB. We don't know it. The distance is 7 plus 5, which is 12. And it's going anti-clockwise. So I'm going to put a negative. So there's my force, RB. We don't know what it is, but we know how far away it is. It's 12 meters from this point. All the way to there is 12 meters. Because 7 and 5 is 12. There must be a little tool that I have to get the perfect circles. So that's the force. Um, RB times 12, I put a negative in front of it because it's anti-clockwise. You could do that. You could do plus there right, and put a minus there. But Okay, we, we put a minus there anyway because it's anti-clockwise. Saves you mucking about a bit. So it's going anti-clockwise, just like that one going anti-clockwise. All that has got to equal zero because the beam is in equilibrium. So the sum of the forces have got to equal zero. So this, so, so sum of the moment, so that's one moment, two moment, three moment, four moment, all got to equal zero. Make sure you do equal zero. Don't just put them in. You've got to put equal zero. So now all I've got to do now is work these numbers out um, and find RB. So what I've done here now is I've, and that looks so minus 3 times 3 is minus 9,000. 5,000 times by 7 is 35,000. 3,000 times by 4.5 is that. And RB times by 12 is just there. Let's get a colour. So, and then I've added all of these up. So, all of that gives me 395. And then I've just broke this is this 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 RB times by 12 is a negative. So we need to bring it across. So I'm plusing RB times by 12 to bring it across. So 39500 equals RB times 12. So I'll just check that. So what you can do is you can put all in one go. Look, so I'll do this all in one go. So minus 3000 times by 3, close the bracket, plus 5,000 times by 7, plus, I mean, you could you could just put 3, as long as you remember it's killer, plus 3,000 times by 4.5, plus all of that, plus that, gives me 39,500. I've bought this negative 
over cross to make it positive. So 395 is RB times by 12. And then to find RB, I'm just going to bring the 12 down. It's multiplied there, so it's going to be divide. So 39500 divided by 12, keep it all in the calculator, will give me 3 point 32916. That's correct answer, look, reoccurring 6. Oh, I've just pressed that. So 3.29, I've made that a 2, look. So 3.29, you could even say 3.3 if you want to. 3.3 kilonewtons. Killer, can't write with this. Don't forget, 10 to the 3 is 1,000, which is a killer. Kilogram, kilobyte. So RB is 3.2. So there's 3.2 coming up there. So now we know that. Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. Let's try and get a, let's see if I can get a big, no, I need to get a big rubber out. So now we know that. So now we know that there's 3.2 coming up. We need to find what RA is. So we can do the same process. We'll do the same process like we've just done, but we'll take moments about point B now. So I'll get rid of all of that. So we know this 3.2 come in here. We need to find this now. So we'll do the same process, take moments about point B to find RA, and then we can check once we've done that, because then we know that the sum of the forces has got to equal zero. So whatever's coming down has got to go up. So we've got, there's a 3 there, there's also a 3 there, don't forget, 3. There's 3 kilonewtons there, there's 3 kilonewtons there, and there's 5 kilonewtons there. Which means there's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's 11 kilonewtons coming down. There's 11 coming down. There's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Which means... So for this thing to be in balance, there's got to be, and will you know, 11 coming back up. So now I know 3.2. A quick way what you can do is, if you take 11, 11 take away 3.2, that will give me that. Because RA plus RB has got to equal 11. But the problem with doing it that way is, if this 3.2 is incorrect then so is this bit here going to be incorrect. So what I'm going to do is take moments about point B just to work this out. And then hopefully I'll add RA and RB up and I should get 11. So the next point, 3.29, 3.29. Um, you know, it's staples here and staples here. I made a little mistake. Let's look at that by 29.5. Think about it a bit, it can't be, because we've only got 11. So, we know RB is 3.2, so to find RA, which is this force here, we need to take moments about point B. So this bit here now, this is going to be my pivot point. There's one force, 5 kilonewtons. Going that way. So which is anti-clockwise. That three is also going to push this beam that way. If that wasn't there. That's also going anti-clockwise. RA is trying to push it that way. Which is clockwise. And the three is trying to push it that way as well. There's the pivot point. Oh, my pen. There's the pivot point. Pivot point is there. So the 5 is going anti-clockwise. This 3 is going anti-clockwise. And that 3 there is going anti-clockwise. And RA is going clockwise. Obviously, we need to work out how far that 5 is away from there. So the 5 is 5 away, look. So that 5 is 5 meters away. This 3 here is going to be 7.5 meters away. It's halfway. Um, this RA is going to be 5 plus 7, 12 away, 
and the 3 is going to be 15 away. So calculate RA, take moments about point B. Don't forget, if it's, it's anti-clockwise, we'll just put a minus and a minus and a minus. So the first one is the 5,000 times by 5. So there's my 5,000. 5,000. Let's get another marker. 5,000 is the force. And how far away is it? So it's 5 meters to that point. So 5 times by 5. Hence 5,000 times by 5. It's going anti-clockwise, that's why I've got a negative. So 5 times 5 is 25, so 20, minus 25,000. The sum of the moments, sum of the moments, sum of the moments has got to equal 0. That's why we're adding them up. Look, add, add, because sum of the moments have got to equal 0. That weird E is sum of, so add them all up, got to equal 0. So we've done that 5, 1. Here's the 3, don't forget, there's a 3 force there of 3 kilonewtons. So it's 3 kilonewtons and how far away is it? So it's halfway, isn't it? So it's 7.5. So 3,000 times by 7.5 because this UDL, this point load is halfway, which is 7.5 because it is. So we've got 3,000 times by 7.5. It's going anti-clockwise. That's why we've got a negative number there. Some of the moments are going to equal zero. Another plus. Here's my three. So this is 3,000. How far away is it from here? What is the length of the beam? Which is 15. So it's going to be 3,000 times by 15. Because all of that is 15. It's 3,000 and it's 15 metres away from our pivot point. It's going anti-clockwise. It's trying to push this beam that way. Okay, If it was just fixed there and there was nothing here, it would spin it anti-clockwise. So it's 3,000 times by 15. I've put a negative number there because it's going anti-clockwise. Plus... We've got one more left. We've got this force here. It is a force. We don't know what it is, so we'll just put it in. And how far away is this force here to this point here? Well, we know it's 7 plus 5, which is 12. So it's going to be RA times by 12. It's trying, trying to go clockwise, so we'll put a plus. There's my plus. That's my force. You could put a bracket there if you want to do. It's 12 meters away. So times by 12. All that, some of the moments have got to equal zero. So all of these now, we'll add them all up. So it's going to be this. Don't forget the minus, plus all of that, plus all of that. I'll do it on the debris. So we'll do, all right, I'll we'll do. Um, minus 5,000 times by 5, close the bracket, plus, because we've got to add them all up, this one's minus 3,000, because that's the force, times by 7.5, because it was halfway long, close the bracket, plus, what's the next one, minus 3,000, how far away was it, uh, 15, close the brackets. All right, so that's the numbers we know. I'm going to press equals, and hopefully it comes to be 92500 minus 92500. Thank you very much. Plus RA times by 12 equals naught. So I don't like this negative here, so I'm going to bring this negative across. I'm going to add 92500 to both sides, which will then get rid of that and bring it over here. So now I've got RA times 12 equals 92500. I want to leave the RA there, so I'm going to bring the 12 down here. Because time there, I'll divide both sides by 12. So 925, them three there, them three dots mean therefore. 
I know it's like the predator aiming system, but it means therefore. So 92500 divided by 12 will give me 7.1. So uh, 925, 92500. Divide that by index die equals 7708. So you could put that in. I've rounded up a bit. So I've gone to there. Look, so 7.7. .7. So there's the 8, so I've gone to the 1 there, 7.71 .7 kilonewtons. Don't forget, really, you, you know, you get errors when you're rounding up. But, so this may add up to a bit more than 11, because I've gone up. 10 to the 3 is uh, 1,000, so kilonewtons. So we know that um, RA is 7.71. So this here now is 7.71. Get rid of all of this. So... We now have got RA and RB. So we know that RB is uh, 3.2. Um, coming up, like, um, And we know that RA is 7.71. So to check that, what we can do is, just to make sure, like we said before, we know that... Um, let's get red. We know that what goes up's got to go down. So for this thing to be in balance, the sum of the forces have got to equal zero. So these forces are coming down. So you could say they're minus. They're coming down. So RA and RB are going up. So to stop this beam from crashing through the floor and things like that. Just as like you on a chair, if you were too heavy for the chair, you'd f fall through the chair because the forces aren't balanced. So what that means really is that 3 plus 5 plus 3, there's a 3 there, don't forget. So there's 3 plus 3 plus 5 coming down, which means there's got to be 3 plus 3 plus 5 coming up. 3 plus 3 plus 5 is 11. Like 3 plus 3 plus 5 is 11. So there's 11 coming down, which means it's got to be 11 coming up. Reaction. So RA, RA, RA plus RB has got to equal, for this thing to be in balance, it's got to equal 11. So we can check now to see if these are correct. Because if we add 3.2 and 7.71, hopefully we'll get 11. So, to check, sum of the forces equals zero, what comes down equals what goes up. So, the forces down equals the forces up. So, the sum of the forces coming down is 3 plus 3 plus 5. So, we've got 11 coming down. For beam to be in equilibrium in balance, RA plus RB has got to equal 11 as well. So, we know RA is 7.71 because we worked it out. And RB is 3.292 because we worked them out. So you should see that if you add these together, it should come to 11. So that just makes us correct. And that is what you should be doing. Um, it's a little bit more than 11, look, because I've rounded up. So 11's coming up, 11's coming down. That's the way that we're correct. Now, what you could have done was to make a lot quicker which I wouldn't advise you do, you could do this. When we worked out this 3.2 by there, because we worked out um, RB to be 3.2. So what we could have said was, right, we know there's 11 coming down. So there's 11 coming down, which means there's 11 got to be coming up. So if I take away... 3.2 from 11, because RB is 3.2, which means RA is going to be the difference between 11 and 3.2. So I could do this, 11, take away 3.2. Now that will give me RA, which it does, isn't it? 7.8, 7.71. So, and you can do it that way, and you'd be correct, wouldn't you? Because... 7.71, 7.8, rounding errors. 
but the problem with that is is that you could be wrong you know because if you'd have calculated for some reason say if you'd have worked out and you made a mistake here somewhere like i did all right because we all make mistakes if you'd have made a mistake and instead of 3.2 you worked out 4.2 for some reason so now you've said 4.2 is rb um if you then have gone 11, take away 4.2, you're going to be wrong, aren't you? Because it's 6.8. So that is incorrect, and you would really know. Because 6.8 plus 4.2 still, give, still gives you 11. So what you should do is you should check. You should, you should work it out by using moments, which is this. This is by moments, and this is by moments. You then have two numbers, and if they add up to equal 11, then you know you're correct. Or you're 99% sure that you're correct. So when you're doing these ones, you need to do them both ways, just to make sure, to check yourself. Because if this RB is incorrect with you, then RA is going to be incorrect. So you need to do that. And you should always check and recheck your work anyway. So that is calculating reactions with an overhang. With point loads. Don't forget a point load is just a posh name for force coming down. And a UDL. Uniformly distributed load. So I hope that makes a bit of sense. It's quite straightforward once you know what you're doing. Step by step by step. Make sure you include all your assumptions. Go through it slowly, make sure you, you know, get the right distances and get the right directions. Equal to zero, equal to zero. Um, and then check to make sure that what's going up is coming down. Any problems, let me know. Over and out.